Um, my name is Mike Bradley. I'm an associate professor here in the Department of Agriculture and Tourism, or, or what will be the Department of Agriculture and Tourism starting July 1. Um, we're merging uh, ag and then uh, parks, recreation, and hospitality all in one, and uh, we'll also be migrating over to the College of Business. Um, later, in the, later in the slide, I'll have my email, but my email is mbradley19 at atu.edu. At any point, uh, you want to shoot me an email to get the materials related to this presentation, uh, I'm happy to share any of those. Um, so I think that's the housekeeping. Uh, along with that, I'll have the chat box over here open. I'll try to monitor that as we go. Feel free to um, uh, shoot a comment or a question or whatever it may be over there. Um, so this presentation came out of uh, some work that I've been working, some work I've been working on, some things I've been working on uh, from my previous and into this institution. Um, service learning is actually a major component of my pedagogy within my classes whenever I can make it happen. So let's get over here. We're going to try to make this. So so what is, first thing is kind of, you know, framing this out is what is service learning? You know, some people kind of comment that it's a dimension of community engagement or civic engagement, which it certainly can be. Others may term it as experiential learning or experiential education, which it certainly may be as well. We're going to kind of hone that down a little bit, and we're going to call it a, a course-based educational experience or project that has benefits for the students and the community, um, and, and sometimes for the faculty as well. We can talk about that a little bit afterwards if you want to talk about how we can use these uh, toward uh, teaching scholarship and service uh, as far as our portfolio, CV, stuff like that. So what, really what we're thinking about from, from, uh, from you know, the 10,000 or 20,000 foot view, really, if you will, is how service learning relates to things like student retention and that's retention within the class, so the student stays uh, coming to class and en enrolled in the class. Um, how that student is retained as far as a student in the university, they continue on after their freshman, sophomore, or junior year, or whatnot. Um, and then as far as retention going, as far as you know, uh, keeping engaged uh, across uh, the entirety of their courses, you know, the, the whole schedule. Um, then we look at graduation rate. How does uh, how will, how can long-term service learning affect graduation rate as far as are they graduating on time, are they reticulating in a good fashion, and so on and so forth. Also looking at their academic performance, uh, you know, how, and, and this is kind of where we're getting a little bit more uh, as we kind of drill these down, is kind of getting a little bit more specific to the course that we're going to, and the assessment we're looking at is, uh, so academic performance, does a student perform well as far as within the, the classroom, within those assignments uh, attached to those uh, service learning engagements? And then finally, you know, overall, we're looking at what I call the KSAEs. You probably heard KSAs as far as, as, far as knowledge, skills, and abilities. Um, I like to add the E on there as, as far as experiences as well. Uh, and some people add networking in there as well. But looking at the knowledge, build, knowledge skills, and abilities of the student um, and experiences they gain from the service learning um, experience or whatnot. So this is my kind of service learning checklist. And it's not, uh, I, I want to stress, it's not a timeline. Sometimes it works out really well. This is a timeline, right? Oftentimes when you're working with an external partner, uh, that town and gown relationship or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, th this kind of flows back and forth a little bit toward you get, until you get to the, you know, the boots on the ground. Uh, the first thing we want to do is identify a project or a need. So that can be within a community, an agency, uh, or you know, a specific uh, area, uh, geographic area. Um, you know, what is the need? Um, so. One, one example I used in a previous or in the previous uh, presentation is downtown Russellville had a couple of empty lots, and um, you know we were looking at what can we do with those empty lots related to recreation and tourism, um, and and so they had there's a need. It's it's not like a pressing need, right? It's not like we're going to change the world by going and looking at these empty lots, but we identified the need, um, and then we wanted to look at what course can they kind of fit within. So. As you do more and more of these, you'll see a lot more people asking you to do stuff uh, for their project, for their department, uh, commercial entities, and whatnot. How does that? How what course is that best going to align with? You know, you know, if we're looking at um, development in a downtown area, we used our master planning class here in our department to kind of uh, to put that in there, and it worked out pretty well with that because there was no specific timeline. But you know, so we identified a course that we thought would work well with. The, the need or the project. And then when we do that, we got to think about, you know, the progression of the course and how that experience is going to help with the content and how the content is going to help the students with the experience. And the same thing with like the skills, 
uh, and the abilities and experiences, right? So how, how do those align both within the, the progression of the content and the progression of the project in the course? Sometimes, and uh, you know, we look at how the how the project fits within the course as far as is it is it front loaded? Uh, so is is the is the project going to be from you know from the start? You come the first day of class, we're going to talk about the project, we're going to get rolling on it, and if uh, you know we got these uh, project based or uh, project based or partition based pedagogies that may have more of that on it. Is there is the course front loaded with material or content, and then midway or so? We start working on our project and move forward, or are we kind of, you know, having the course content throughout the course and at the very end as a final project or whatnot, kind of focusing on the the, the community project. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we want to look at planning. So, you know, what, what, you know, does the project fit within the parameters of the course? So, you know, there's there's often times that folks uh, outside of academics, uh, academia don't really understand or or they're not aware of the timing of a semester. So you'll have people coming like, I need this done in June, or I need this completed in, um, I, I wanna start on October and I need it done in November. Or, you know, they just come too late. You know, they give you plenty of time, but like this is a, I want it to start in January and end in April. Well, that usually works great, except you're coming to me in January. So you gotta think about the timing and kind of work with, as the liaison uh, for your department and your course and your students working with that community liaison to kind of plan that out. And then work with the parameters of resources needed. What kind of funds and time is needed? Um, and so somebody asked in a previous session is like, how do you go about that? And I was telling her, I'm just really honest. This is what it's going to take. There's a lot of projects I do completely for free, and it's a benefit to the community and the students. Great. If there's going to be resources needed, I'm very honest and upfront. A lot of times they get a lot of uh, mileage out of their funds or their resources when they're working with students versus if they went out and paid somebody to do it like as a consultant or a hired labor or whatnot. So most of the time they're, they're very aware and willing. Uh, and if they don't have the resources, they at least understand, but I, I'm very honest. This is how much money it's going to take to have my students do X, Y, or Z. The other part of it is with the time, I'm very honest about the timing, kind of working with students through the progression of that project. Oftentimes is going to take longer than it normally would just because you've got to, teach the content, move them into the planning stage and so on and so forth. It's just going to, the time is going to be a little bit extended. Um, and I want them to know that right up front as well. And then, you know, we kind of, toward the, toward the end of the planning stage, we backtrack and look at the student learning outcomes that we already have set up for our courses and how can we link this project to that. And that usually, by that point, you're already a little bit down the road a little bit and you understand that the project and the content needed and you can kind of link that a little bit easier. <coughs> Excuse me again. I got allergies, so I apologize. Um, so we, we look at that. And then we, after looking at the assessments, right, we, and after we've got the, the, the idea honed in, we've got the resources, um, I backtrack and think, what's the best way to assess them um, as far as with, with within the project and related to the content and all that? And it changes depending on the project. So that's kind of like what we're looking for as far as the checklist for, for the, the, the planning stage, if you will. I imagine many of you have done service learning projects or volunteer projects or the like in your classrooms in some capacity. The big question I had is, you know, and, and it takes a lot of work, right? There, there's a lot of planning, a lot of time, a lot of meetings. There's meetings about your meetings. I'm sure we're all very well aware of that. It takes a lot of time and effort and work. Um, my big question is, is I'm willing to do all that, but is it worth it? Are these students getting enough out of it that it's going to, that it is worth continuing to go down those roads, so to speak. And that's really thinking about their growth and development personally, professionally, and related to the content uh, attainment and retainment and all that kind of stuff. I want to know if it was really worth all the effort to put in. So we started working toward a survey. Um, and so what happens is this survey is given to students at the conclusion of the uh, service learning project or uh, endeavor, whatever your experience, there's, you know, people use different words and things we wanted to know about. So uh, this is just some kind of some general things and we'll talk about a, a few more, a little bit more specific. Uh, we want to know how much time was invested in the project. So we're talking about the faculty time, planning and uh, facilitating the project in the classroom 
and the student's time inside the classroom and external to the classroom. So how much time are we dedicating of theirs in the class? Um, you know, is it one hour per week or 33% or, you know, whatever it may be? Um, how much time are they dedicated? And an estimate of how much time they're dedicating outside of the classroom. Um, and, and no judgments here, <laughs> judgmental free zone, but we just kind of being aware of how much time the students are having to invest in this. And it's an estimate. Uh, then we want to look at the type of projects we're looking at. So and we'll kind of go through those in a second, but we're looking at, you know, environmental restoration, uh, education and tutoring, different things like that. Um, then we want to look at their personal and professional growth. And we'll go through that a little bit more detail in a second as well. But kind of think about like how they're growing uh, professionally and personally through that project. And, and that's kind of where like the, the, the wonderful things happen, right? Um, so a few final things. We want to look at how the, the professor, me or otherwise, are assessing the students within the course. So are they using journaling, presentations, uh, formative, summative assessments, all kinds of different things. Um, then we wanna look at the student perception of the experience. Do they think it's worth it for the service learning? Uh, do they find value? Uh, would they take more courses and so forth and so on? And then some general demographics to help us do some analysis on the back end if you ever wanted to look into that as well. You know, we look at major uh, age, ethnicity, sex, uh, years in college, a variety of different things just to kind of try to hone in of where we're doing well and where we can improve. Okay, so now we're getting into the actual survey we ha I have. Um, and I wanted to make it very clear, I have a copy of this. If you're interested in getting a copy, um, I can email it to you and I'll put my email in the chat box here in just a second as well. Um, so one of the first things we looked for is <coughs> the type of service project they did. And you can see we've got a, a, a wide array of settings here um, you know, for instance, we've got tutoring and mentoring and also the educational programs and teaching. And we wanted to split that up based on some conversations within the, the College of Education. Um, and then we look at, you know, we, we do in our area, we do a lot of research uh, and environmental restoration programs. So one of the previous pictures you saw, two students kind of hunched over what it looked like a cage with concrete on it. And that was moisture habitat restoration work we did uh, in the Outer Banks, North Carolina. Uh, so there's a variety of different things we can do, right? And we, we just want to know what kind of project in general was it. And for, you know, we got the other for anything that just doesn't fit into these general categories. Um, then, then we moved on to this. is Like I said, this is where I think that the, the beauty of all this is, is the next couple of things. And what we had here is a Likert scale uh, on one to five. And you, you can change that up if you need to. But, you know, one is strongly disagree to five is strongly agree, three being neutral, right? Um, and we just had them answer some questions. You know, this project helped me better understand people of different ages, abilities, cultures, and economic backgrounds. So we're looking at a little bit more of that per personal growth. Uh, and then you get down to like, help me uh, better understand the subject matter of this course. So we're looking at more of that professional development. Um, and what we did here, how we got these is we worked with uh, the University of Georgia, uh, Ui Pui, and I think the, the University of Portland uh, are three of the major leaders as far as service learning development and, and assessment. And we, what we did is kind of combined all their assessment tools and created this from that. Um, and, you know, and we, you never, I don't want to give the students a survey that's, you know, 30 minutes long after it. Um, this usually takes them five to 10 minutes to go through um, is what I've been told. Um, I get through it a little quicker than that when I do my testing and whatnot, but a um, little bit of background there. So really you can kind of read through these, um, you know, and they, they kind of range and how they kind of go about it. But, we're really looking for the growth of the students. So we we already have an assessment for the content of the course. If we're doing research methods, they're gonna they're gonna be quizzed or whatever it may be about sampling and about you know survey methodology and quantitative and qualitative analysis or whatever it may be. This is more focusing on the uh, or on the service learning, and uh, you know it's an assessment, but it's really just getting uh, their perception of it, of it all. Uh, a couple more as far as the professional development. You know this project helped manage my time efficiently. Help me plan a project, work as a team member. And um, you can see where this would be pretty valuable information, right? Um, and then we looked at assessments used related to the service learning. So, you know, did they engage in journaling, journaling or reflective writing? Was there a poster or a, dim, or a visual uh, demonstration? Was there a report? Um, and these kind of range, you know, depending on the, the project, depending on the, the, the partner, the external partner, what they were looking for. These can kind of run the gamut, um, you know, it's very common to have journaling or reflective writing. Um, you know, it's, it's same with a group group or class discussions, especially on site. You know, we gather around, this happened, let's all gather around and talk about it for a second. 
or, you know, somebody shows up that, you know, out of the blue, you've got the city council, uh, a city council member there on site and they talk about stuff. Well, boom, great time for a class discussion. Uh, and the same thing with uh, presentations, whether it be oral or poster, um, that's pretty common uh, across the board is have the students kind of uh, do a five or a 10, usually five, 10 minute presentation about what they learned or the project itself. Um, I tend to go a little bit more, so I have them do a project, uh, like a report, right? And so they've got a they've got a, a 10, 20 page report that they're doing about the project. And my presentation is more related to the service learning component. I want you to tell me about the project briefly, but then tell me what you learned as it relates to the content. So I kind of try to bring it in full, full, full circle, if you will. And then we ask them to evaluate the service learning component in general. Um, you know, things like, you know, the university should offer service learning courses for anybody who's interested. Um, you know, you, the, they would do other, they would do other courses that had service learning components. Um, they want more service learning versus classroom work. Um, I use this as a gauge to see how well I did for the service learning. I think if, when I, when I get lower numbers here, I feel like maybe I didn't do the best job creating facilitating the service learning project because I think a good service learning project they're you know gonna blow all this out of the water um, so it, all these combined is it worth it we look at if they are prefer personal and professional growth so if those numbers are, are in and I don't want to say good or bad as five or four or three but if those numbers are where you'd like them to have them as far as you know the amount of work you're investing then it's worth it you know what I find overall is that personal and professional growth is I, that's where I found the value in facilitating it. You know, do they think it's worth it? Are they growing? Do they feel like they're getting something out of it? And then I use this, uh, the evaluation of the service learning component to really go back and think, did I do, where can I improve it? So they get something out of it. They think it's great, but this is how can I improve it uh, moving forward? Maybe I need to, uh, you know, frame it a little differently or uh, facilitate a little differently. And then um, overall, before I go for questions or discussions, something that I think is great about service learning, and, I, and I'll preach this till, till I'm blue in the face, I guess, is uh, it hits on all three components. You can, you know, scholarship, teaching, and service. So teaching, um, automatically put this, you know, within your pedagogy and your, you know, your, your different tools and weapons you use to, for effective teaching. Um, for me, I have more fun doing service projects and getting the students out of the classroom, so I naturally am more engaged, have better connections with the students, more discussions and all that. And I've noticed that when I use service learning or significant service learning, that uh, my course evaluations also improve. Um, and, and you know, like everybody else, I want to do a good job. I want to have uh, I want to have good students, or not? I don't want to have. I do want to have good students. I want students to feel like they are doing good in my class and they're engaged and connected. You know, something that with that first presentation this morning, thinking about how students feel comfortable, uh, you know, with you as the instructor or whatnot. And I want to create that. And I think service learning helps do that. You know, we see the, we, they see me in an outside environment. Um, in fact, this this picture right here, a student saw me in a baseball hat. And if you know, I, I wear baseball hats a lot, but the students don't see that a lot. And once student goes, you know, like you're wearing a hat, I'm like, yeah, I'm human too, right? Uh, so there's that connection as well. Uh, so that it naturally goes on to teaching uh, service, uh, you know, depending on what uh, what kind of project you're doing, but always within, you know, working with that external partner, um, whether it's the Arkansas Game and Fish, whether it's the local Boys and Girls Club or whatever it may be, is uh, facilitating that in a way that you're you naturally get those service components. Um, and I know that, you know, service to the university and the college and the department are, you know, have priority um, and then service to something in your profession. But these are some of those extras and bonuses that you can throw in there. And then scholarship, um, you know, especially with this survey, but anytime you can utilize that and create scholarship of scholarship of teaching or whatever it may be, um, it's, it's, it's an easy triple dip, if you will. OK, so with that, um, like I said, I'm happy to share uh, any materials. <coughs> excuse me again i'm happy to share any materials with i've got uh, i'll record this uh or i am recording this and i'm happy to share a link to that recording i've got the uh the presentation as far as a powerpoint or a pdf and then i've got uh the, the survey i'm using as far as uh, it's on question pro right now 
um, but I've got it downloaded on in a Word document, um, so I can share that as well. And then if there's anything else, there's a, there's a ton of material out there about the benefits of service learning, um, but I've got a few articles that we kind of, uh, kind of go back to on a consistent basis. Um, beyond that, I'm happy to answer any questions or uh, address any comments, uh, things of that nature, but um, that concludes my presentation. If you don't have anything, I'll hang out. Um, and if you have anything else, uh, feel free to drop a comment or come on here and chat, but uh, I'll let you go beyond that. And then there's my email and uh, you can shoot me an email if you're interested in getting those materials. I think I've said that 20 times. Y'all have a great afternoon. I'll see you soon.